Hi there, this is Jennifer at Bromfields, and today I'm going to talk about some tips for knitting with a super bulky yarn. And typically I use Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick. It is comparatively uh, relatively inexpensive. Um, I like it. Yeah, I like it. It makes a great test yarn also. So whenever I go to knit with oh, the lovely merino wools, I know that I've already had a chance. So I knit my pattern with this first. So I get my gauge and tension pretty close to what I want. And I make sure that I like the pattern because I don't always end up, it doesn't always end up the way I think it should look. So before I open up one of these and use it and frog it over and over again, I test my pattern with this first to make sure that these are going to work because I have a lot of money invested in these and not so much in this one. So that's one of my little tips. All right, so tip number two is to use metal needles. Metal needles help me because the yarn slides easily. It doesn't catch or grab and it allows for a looser tension. So I really like having uh, metal needles when I use a super bulky yarn. My next tip is that I use Haya Haya interchangeable needles. So this is my set and I'm missing my size uh, 15s there, which I'll show you in here in a second. But these have 15, 13, and 11s. And depending on what project I'm on, I'll use different needle sets. But I really love using my cable needle, the cable to knit with. So I just put my needles on. This one here is a 24 inch cable, which is probably, it depends on what I'm, I'm knitting. If I knit a hat, I use my 16 inch or my boot cuff 16 inch. But I think just about everything else, I use a 24 inch. Or if I knit a headband, um, I'll use the 16 inch also. Whether I knit a flat one or in the round, I use my 16 inch cable because it's not very many stitches. Um, but I like using a cable needle versus the regular straight needles because the super bulky yarn is heavy and it just gets heavier and heavier as your project grows. So it can be cumbersome using straight needles with um, the bulky yarn. So I really recommend using a cable needle. It really makes the project go, I don't know, it goes faster and it's lighter. It makes it more enjoyable in my opinion. Uh, the other thing I like about the cable needles, which doesn't have anything to do with the bulky yarn, but um, when I drop one, it doesn't roll across the floor and um, I can just pick it up and keep going. So it does help save me some time uh, using the cable needles versus the straight needles because I don't lose them in the couch or they roll across the floor. Uh, so anyways, I enjoy using my cable needles for just about everything. Um, no for everything. I don't use my straight needles anymore. I actually find them difficult to use now that I have used these so much. So I actually, I have um, given up on my straight needles. All right, the other thing that I'm going to go over, tip number four, is to use the right needle size to obtain your gauge. Um, I have a lot of people ask me how I obtain my gauge uh, for my pattern and that's my patterns. That's why I'm going over these tips because I just, I don't realize it was so different to knit with a chunky yarn, a super bulky versus um, just knitting with a thinner yarn. And there are a lot of differences once I started thinking about it. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some of my tips, um, recommendations for what I use whenever I knit. Uh, when I knit my boot cuffs, I usually use a size 11 tip. Uh, that's because I don't need a lot of stretch and I'm okay with it being a little stiff. 
and I'm, at, I'm trying to get it small so it fits around my calf, which is significantly different than a hat. So I want a smaller stitch. Um, it just That's what works for me. If you happen to knit really tight, uh, then bump it up to a size 13 or even a 15. But it really is a personal preference. Um, well, not a really a preference, it's just how you knit. So you need to um, play with that to figure out what your gauge is. For cowls, I like using a size 13 needle. It still gives me a little bit of, it's not really tightness, but it gives it some structure so it can still like stay up um, and stand tall. So I like to use a size 13 for my cowls and it makes it uh, the stitch is just a little bit looser so it's a little cozier and then I bump it up to my size 15 needles whenever I do a blanket because that makes it squishy and cozy and it's for me it's the perfect needle for a blanket it's awesome I'm, I'm knitting um, one right now and I just love the squishiness that I didn't realize Titchen had such a, a factor in the coziness of the the yarn, but using a uh, the size 11 creates a pretty tight stitch, which is going to make it pretty itchy, and you're not going to want that up against your skin. So it's definitely I wouldn't recommend it for a cowl at all. It's it's very itchy, makes the yarn taut and not relaxed. So the more relaxed the yarn is, the cozier it's going to be. So I hope that all made sense. Let's go on to tip number five. Uh, also has to do with the right needle size. If you're not using a pattern um, or you're creating a pattern, keep in mind what type of stitches you're gonna be doing. If you're gonna just be doing a lot of knit stitches and you're making a cowl, then definitely go with a 15. If, um, well, 13 I mean. If you're going to be doing some cable stitches or um, a seed stitch even, you may want to bump it up to a 15 uh, because those stitches are a little tighter if you're just doing all knit stitches. So keep in mind what stitch you're going to be doing versus what size of needle you'll be needing for that because you don't want a stiff fabric because then it makes it itchy up against your, st your skin. So. Uh, tip number six, uh, keep your hands dry. So I'll move that to the side. I have learned my trick is cornstarch. Um, I, I have this on hand. You can use baby powder, but I don't have a baby anymore. So um, cornstarch, I put it in a little salt shaker. And if you've ever been to Pizza Hut and used a Parmesan cheese, this acts about the same way. It's kind of hard to come out, which is good. So tap it on the bo bottom and you just want a little bit. And keeping your hands dry, I don't want all that extra, is really, really important for your tension. Um, sometimes just I'm maybe I'm nervous and I want to knit um, or it's really humid outside. Sometimes it's just humid. Um, so I keep cornstarch handy. Uh, to keep my help keep my hands dry. All right, so let's move on to tip number seven. This one's funny, funny, funny. A band aid. Oh, that's upside down. A band aid. When I first started knitting, and actually I would say for quite a long time, I would say a year or two even, even now I still will use a band aid if I am um, going to be binge watching some. I don't know, Netflix. I put a band-aid on my index finger. I just put it on like this. So I wrap it. I want to pinch it with my thumb and I want to wrap it around. Not too tight, but fairly tight. And I don't, sometimes this here will get kind of caught up in your yarn. So you want to make sure it stays down. Um, and I definitely recommend the band-aid brand. I have used a generic uh, before and it just it doesn't stay in place. Really I can take this thing off and use it over and over again. So 
uh, I definitely recommend. That was a small band-aid and I think that you can only get them in like a variety pack so I don't go through the bigger ones as much but I sometimes will cut them in half and go ahead and I use them like this and it it works also but this is my favorite size to use. So band-aid. Um, number eight is tension. Tension, tension, tension. That's probably the most important part. So all of those things that I just discussed wrap up in getting the right tension. Actually, you know what? I missed one. Mm -mm. We're gonna say keeping your yarn loose is, is another thing whenever you're knitting. So let's backtrack a little bit to keeping your yarn loose. I will show you I use, I'm knitting it with a super, super huge chunky yarn. I use a old vintage a battery case. Sorry about this, but I want to give you a little bit better idea. That's what it looks like. It's a big glass battery case that says uh, waterline right here. You can usually find them in antique stores. Um, if you are lucky. They're sometimes hard to find um, in Kansas. They aren't too hard to find. They're pretty common um, at antique stores and um, auctions. Auctions, I love auctions. Um, but they are, that is super helpful. You can also probably use like a plastic tub um, because you want to be able to pull your yarn and you want slack in it. So you want slack. You don't want to knit right off your ball or your skein. You need it loose before you start knitting so that there is very, very little tension. And also I take off my rings because it kind of gets caught up in this yarn. So the tension part, that's all I use for tension. Very little tension and I just let it flow. So my hands are dry. I'm using metal needles because it slides very easily. There's no grip. All right, so I keep my stitches very loose. Keep the yarn loose off of the ball and I never really noticed how much I use my index finger when I knit but I use it almost for every stitch and sometimes I'll do two stitches and then move it but I use my index finger a lot so band-aid is very helpful to keep my index finger so I can keep knitting more and longer so I hope you found that to be helpful and I'll see you again next time